Welcome to the Irish Film Magazine. Today we're talking to Stephen Gaffney on the production of his third film, Red Room, and his recent success within the Irish independent circuit. So Stephen, tell us, what's been happening recently? My first feature, Bully, was made for €300, Euro and uh, that was la this time last year, which, and it's gone to over 20 f film festivals and picked up five awards so far, and it's been still going ahead, and uh, it was out there Wrapping on my second feature that's also no budget, like low no budget, uh, class A that's coming out in probably September. We're still editing it now, and Red Room is the first film that have a bit, bit of money behind it, so I'm really confident about it. Fantastic. And without giving too much away, what is uh, the story behind Red Room? So, three girls who get kidnapped and they're taken off to an isolated house where uh, that's being controlled by mean fellas, the usual, and one by one they get taken off, but they don't know what's happened, and basically just a lot of blood, and can't give much away other than that. <laughs> but it is nothing like you've ever seen before. Irish horror films haven't topped the polls recently. What makes your film stand out to the rest? It's really hard to try to think of a horror film, like an original horror film, you've seen them all before, like, and even this one could be compared with some other films, I'm not going to mention what they are because I give away what it is, but this is, I've never seen anything else like it whatsoever at all, story wise, nothing at all. And it's loosely based on true events, really just off the wall and realistic and nothing, like not even the story horror films, any horror film, just completely different, but it would be definitely weird in a good <laughs> way, in a good way. Okay. So, you've made a pre-production trailer. Let's take a look at that. I just left now, so I should be back in about 10 minutes or so. Yeah, see you soon. Okay, bye. Hello? I think you dropped your phone. Hello? Hello? For an indie production, you've managed to assemble quite a few well-known faces, including some actors from Game of Thrones and other TV shows. What do you look for whenever you're casting uh, for the likes of Red Room? Uh, actually, when I was writing the script, me and um, my girlfriend, Eric, she co-wrote the script, and we had no idea of who we wanted to play the characters already. So we actually wrote for them. and But we sent out the first, first draft to them, uh, to Eddie Jackson, Brian Forge, and uh, Amy Kelly, but loads and tons of them and uh, they all said yeah straight away then we just built on that and then kept them sending them off new drafts and then that was it really they all just they were sort of wear the characters straight away so and where do you see red room going once it's finished uh we're doing the festival circuit first um i like in particular like the underground cinema festival in Ireland because it's really independent and they showed my first film which was made for nothing and it showed loads of sh me short films were made for like zero and my huge fan that's a uh, Dave Bourne he runs that um, so I'd be hunting there but then be going to a free fest um, mainly the horror film festivals and what about distribution well that's where film festivals usually come in they if it does well in the film festival which um, I imagine it will be a bit controversial well not a bit very controversial that uh, it'll get a bit of a name and hopefully go on from there one of the big problems faced by independent filmmaking is funding. How did you manage to overcome this hurdle um, with Red Room? After I made Bully and Class A, they nearly killed me because I was doing 
nearly all well, I can't take all the credit, but some some days of shooting, I was doing camera sound, clapperboard, continuity, assistant director. So I just knew that I needed to get money for like camera operator, or everything I just said basically, plus uh, special effects because this film has no CGI. So I just went around to everybody that I knew that was involved in uh, producing and got basically to invest. So they they're investing with. Uh, they, they, they read the script and thought it was a good script and they think that film will sell, so they're going to get some money back from that. They're fairly confident it's going to sell, so we have the money for production, so it'll be, but, not, but not post-production, so, it's, so we're still looking for investors for post-production, which is like uh, editing, sound mixing, score, there's loads left, but we got, the main thing is that we're getting the film shot now. So Unlike other films, then everyone involved will make it some sort of pay? Yeah. If the film is successful then, which it will be. Yeah. So there's still an opportunity for people to invest in Red Room? Yeah. And how do they go about it? Uh, they can contact us, mainly, mainly we're doing mainly everything through Facebook, but uh, Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Red Room Film, or they can contact us through email, which is deepwebfilms at gmail.com, and that's mainly for post-production, so it's but I still being part of the whole film, doesn't matter what's up, if it's post or pre-production, whatever, they're still down as investors and going to be in credits and all that, and if the film makes money back, they get a return of it, so. What advice would you give to any directors starting out in the business? Uh, it sounds a bit of a cliche, but never I give up. I've been, I'm 28 now, and I started writing when I was over, t over 10 years ago, and this is the first film where I actually got money handed to me to make a film, so that's over 10 years of making, not bad films, but making films for nothing basically, and getting nothing in return or anything whatsoever, so just keep at it until you make it. Not that I've made it yet, but I hoped it. Stephen Gaffney, director of the forthcoming horror film Red Room, thank you very much. Thanks.